Hello everyone. So what is machine learning? Very intuitively, machine learning is basically the science and very often the art of getting computers to learn from their data and then to act on their own. Um, stated a little bit less glamorously, most machine learning methods basically boil down to ways to automatically set numbers in a function that we don't want to set by hand ourselves. Um, so that sounds quite far away from, you know, the grand goals of getting your homemade robot a brain of its own. But it is the principle that underlies um, most of the kind of visible machine learning advances from speech recognition to self-driving cars to personalized medicine. So in this video, I will briefly step through an example which illustrates this idea of um, getting an algorithm to set numbers inside a function for us so that we don't have to set it explicitly. And along the way, I'll also introduce some terminology that you need to know um, for the rest of the course. Let's imagine we want to write a program to detect spam emails. Before you watch on, maybe you can pause and without looking at the slide too much, think how you might do this. You could even scribble down some, um, some pseudocode. So here's my first simple attempt in Python at a spam filter. So we've got a function here called check spam. And the function takes in an email, which is basically just a list of words uh, contained in that email. What we then do is we step through um, the email word by word and we check, is the current word in this list of bad words? If the word is in this list, then we set the spam a variable to true. And that means that we will ultimately return and say that this email is indeed spam. If we've got an email containing none of these words, then we will never change the variable spam in that for loop and we will return false. So I think this is a okay first attempt, um, but maybe you can see some shortcomings. Um, if you do get an email from your uncle, um, your real uncle, then this function will actually detect that email as spam because it's making a very hard decision for whether the email contains spam or not. So let's think of a slightly more advanced example, uh, more advanced attempt, where instead of just making this very, very hard decision, what we're going to do is we're going to score an email. We're going to basically, again, loop through the words. And then based on the badness of the different words, we're going to say this email uh, contains spam or not. So this is my more advanced attempt. We start with a spam score of zero. And then what we do is we again loop through the words in the email. If the word is in our bad word list, then instead of just marking this thing as spam, we're going to increase the spam score. So the higher the spam score, um, the more likely it is that this email contains, um, contains spam. So this how bad is word um, thing here, that is a dictionary and that um, returns uh, a large value when we have a very, very bad word um, and a, a smaller value if the word isn't so bad. And so the idea is that this dictionary would really score the badness of each of the words. And then what we do is, um, we, so we loop through all of the words in our email. Every time the word is in our bad word list, we increase the score. Um, maybe win will have a bigger score than, um, I don't know, uncle. So win is a worse word. And then what we do after looping through the whole email and adding up the word scores is we check whether the total score is higher than some threshold. If it is, then we set spam to true. Otherwise, we set spam to false. So you could, in principle, have an email containing some of these bad words, but if the bad words are um, just very limited, then your score could still be below the threshold, and then you would still say that this email is not spam. So you could still interact with your uncle. Now, the question here is that this dictionary, how bad is word? How do we actually set the values in that dictionary? How do we actually select the word badness scores. The one option is to do it by hand, 
which will be quite frustrating because now we need to sit down and go through all the words in the language of English and basically write down a score for how bad we think that word is for a, in a spam email. The machine learning way of doing this is basically to define a model which might actually look like this advanced um, filter example here, this function. And then instead of setting this bad wordness scores by hand, we get many examples of previous, previous emails which have been labeled as spam or not. And the scores for each of the words in this how bad is word dictionary is then learned from these previous examples, from these previous emails. So this example of the spam email detector actually illustrates a large part of the machine learning process. In general, what we would do is we would have a model F that takes as input X and produces some output Y. Inside the model, we will have some parameters inside this F that we need to learn or need to fit. And this is accomplished by a learning algorithm that adjusts the parameters based on a training data set. In our spam filter example, X, the input would be an email consisting of all the words in that email. And the output Y would be an indication for whether this is spam or not. The training data set would consist of examples of previous emails which have been labeled as uh, containing spam or not. The parameters in this case for the internal model in the spam example um, would be this dictionary of word badness. We haven't actually spoken about how the learning algorithm goes about changing the parameters, the word badness scores in this example, and, but that's really what machine learning is about. Let's just talk about some um, terminology. I will normally refer to X as the input or the input features. Um, other people might call it the predictor. That's one word that's um, sometimes used in the, especially in the statistics literature, they could call it the predictor. I will call Y the output, or sometimes I will call it the, the target. Um, other people might call it the response. Also in the statistics literature, that's, that's often used. F, um, I'll call that the model, uh, which is uh, the normal way of talking about it. Um, other people might sometimes call it the hypothesis as well. Um, because you're making an assumption uh, or you have an hypothesis of how this model maps input features um, to an output. So I alluded to this just on the previous slide, um, but there's sometimes an overlap between the terms machine learning, statistics, and then data science or data analytics. It's actually quite hard to distinguish these areas from each other, and it's probably not that meaningful to do so but um, let's briefly try. So um, a bunch of clever people have def defined machine learning in the past. I think the first um, time the term was used was um, by Arthur Samuel, um, who, called, uh, who said that machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. A somewhat more recent definition by Kevin Murthy, who wrote a really nice textbook, um, is that machine learning has the goal to develop methods that can automatically detect patterns in data and then use the uncovered patterns to predict future data or other outcomes of interest. Machine learning is very, very often focused on prediction, um, basically learning by experience from data and then making prediction for new types of unseen input. Statistics um, deals with the analysis interpretation and presentation of data. That comes from uh, Wikipedia, it's an awesome source. So statistics often emphasizes explaining more than prediction. So it asks, what does the data say? If I look at this data set, what can I learn from the data? Data science and data analytics, which of course are terms that I think become very popular over the last few years, is um, intuitively it can be seen as a combination of machine learning and statistics, but it also deals with engineering infrastructure for acquiring and storing and processing and pre-processing data and doing that um, data wrangling 
that is required to actually make informed decisions from the data. I should say that this slide, um, it's very subjective. It's, it's my own little opinion and other people might differ from it, but I hope it gives you a high level overview uh, of how these fields kind of um, link together.